The Yapala, the Flinders Ranges, you could just feel the, the aura of this country, of this land. It's very powerful, it's very unique, and it's very ancient. This area has just been through a five year drought. It's one of the longest in living memory. You can see it around here. There's hardly a kangaroo. That five year drought has completely dried up the longest serving water source they've known around here. The Flinders has this unique fish called the Flinders Rangers Purple Spotted Gudgeon and it only survived in the Watutla Creek and a nearby creek called Napawi and so we have two populations which is not a lot for a world population so our goal with the translocation was to double that number. This translocation of the fish, we went out looking for permanent water sources. We found the most perfect place we thought. It was Nirvana for gudgeons, right? Well, as a result of that five year drought, it's completely gone and dried up. That's the effect that climate change has had and we've seen that anecdotally over five years. These fish have to be moved to an insurance colony somewhere and we think we've found one. We're here in this secret location, crazy little creek, no one really knows about it, looking for the, the purple spotted gudgeon. How many fish are you taking out of this population then? And we'll be taking about 75% of them from one source and the other 25% from this source yeah. and all up that'll equal about 600 fish. We didn't really uh, want to take them down some of these corrugated tracks so instead of doing that we we're going to take them by a chopper. How you going, Mr. Sharpie? Yeah, good, thank you. Good, yeah. good. You knew the fish were here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they've been here for quite a long time. And what does it mean to you to see these fish get relocated? I suppose we see, at, as, you know, some places we, it, gets, it gets dry and water starts to disappear. And then maybe, I suppose, we can help these animals to move on a little bit. And I suppose the spirits of the land will yeah. travel with them too. These populations that we're moving to are also permanent water. They'll act as insurance populations. If anything goes wrong at either of these sites, we've got more. And also they're in locations that are far enough away that they probably won't feel the same effects. They're very similar environments, so that they've got the best chance of survival in those places. We're on Bookner Creek, which is on Warradown, which is part of my corporation's properties. All I can say is we're proud to have the fish and hope they live. There was a, another Adimut elder, Sharpie. He was pretty emotional today when the fish left. So yeah, we're thinking of him too. A lot of species that are threatened or, or critically endangered, people don't know about these species. So the gudgeon is one of those species that needs a bit of help. It's a part of nature, it's part of the ecosystem. It's been here for a long time, just like our people, and thankfully we're a part of it. I know you did a, a lot of work leading up to translocating those fish. Now they're there, what happens now? Now we pretty much wait for the fish to do their thing and reproduce, but we try and monitor that. So we'll be out there looking at the water chemistry and temperatures, as well as how well the fish survive and breed. So we'll be working with some of the groups that were involved in catching the fish with us, like the Yakala Indigenous Protected Area Rangers and also the Friends of Okathon and Gamma Rangers to help us monitor how they're going over the next weeks, months and years as well. Any time you can make a difference to the direction the species might be tracking, that's pretty special. One of the most 
beautiful things that I, I see with this program is it's, it involves so many people. You can't, you can't do it by yourself. There's not enough money to do it by yourself. We've got the indigenous population, our first owners looking after their place, their space. We've got pastoralists working with government departments overseen by Bounce Back, we're working with national parks, friends of the parks, weeding programs, cat baiting, fox patrols, reintroductions. And that's all about bringing this environment and this landscape back to what it was and they all want it. So it's really clear that there's a change going on here. But to see all of these communities pull together to counteract and do what they can to preserve what we've got is absolutely astounding. When it does rainy again, then the water rolls fill up. Uh, I'm sure there'll be more fish, but you know, if there isn't any more, uh, then they can always come back to the place from where they came from.